give a very special thanks to 3Doodler for sending this product to us for free. What's up fabs and besties? This is the 3Doodler Start, it's a 3D pen, and this is the 3Doodler Start Plus. There is a difference in the design. The bottom of this one is more narrow and this one is a little wider. Priced at $49.99, we get the USB to charge it, the pen, filament, and a book with new projects and templates that we can try out. I like 3D pens because they allow me to draw my own miniatures. I'm not crazy good at it, I will say that, but I am eager to learn. The filament is BPA free and non-toxic. However, it does say that this pen can only use their filament. So that could be a little limiting. Now I do have the 3 Doodle Create, which would allow me to use lots of different types of filament, but I kind of like the little safety nozzle. So I'm just gonna stick with the 3 Doodle Start a little bit longer because I know me, I'm a little clumsy and uh, that could become an issue. It does say on the packaging for ages six to 13, but I'm taking that as more of a suggestion. It looks like the setup is pretty much the same as the other one. This is the micro USB port and that's how we charge it. The start and stop button, you double click to go reverse. On off switch, the LED light, it lets you know when it's ready to go and when it needs to be charged. And this is where we insert the filament. For $59.99, there is a learn from home pen set that comes with all the other stuff, plus a mat, more filament, a bag, and some more templates. I thought it would be fun to create some templates of our own. You know I'm crazy about the dollhouse, so I would made a few templates that I think might work as miniatures for our dioramas. One of my favorite accounts on Instagram, Stove All the Doll, said we should make a milk crate because you know of their current popularity. Then let's try a cake and a bird cage because someone kept requesting it in the comments. I don't know if any of these projects are going to work because I haven't tested them out yet, but there's no time like the present. I'm taping my pattern onto my cutting mat. I place the three doodler mat on top of the crates. Let's tape that down too. Turn on the pen and wait for the light to turn green. Put filament in the back, push the button, and we can just trace over the pattern. Trying to be neat. I used black earlier just to test it out a little bit and you can still see it. So this one's gonna be a little multicolored. Trying to keep my lines neat is the tricky part for me. Ugh. But we're just gonna do our best. Maybe if I just angle it better. Oh yeah, that's way better. Operator error, y'all. Operator error. I did an outline, now let's just continue outlining each section, trying to be neat and even. Ah, gotta push the filament down. There you go. Nothing's coming out. It's because the filament isn't pushed all the way in. Oh, and I'm making a mess. Okay, there we go. I do have a few seconds before it cools to try to push it back into shape. Then continue. No, <laughs> I accidentally just lifted the whole thing off. Ugh. Okay, we'll be starting over. We are back to where we were. I had to take it off and start over. And yeah, it's all about the angle. If I keep the nozzle on the mat, I get a much neater line. And try not to touch the filament too much because it'll stick to your fingernails. And then lift off the page and yeah, things just go downhill from there. Now that we've finished our lines, let's fill in this space. And I'm just gonna go back and forth, trying to be very neat and not leave a whole bunch of gaps. I do have a few gaps, so I'm just gonna go over and add another line right on the edge to try and clean that up. 
It comes off the mat very easily, sometimes before you want it to. The back is kind of shiny, so if you're really good with this, you may want to like reverse it and have this as the side that's facing out. So you just got to make sure that your line work is very neat in the beginning. Now we just need three more of these and one of these. I'm just stuck in rewind, need a change before I break so dumb, but I just wanna be someone. We have all the pieces now. This did take quite a bit of filament. I could probably save a little if I just made the sides a little thinner. But now we can go ahead and assemble it. Take the bottom the one without a handle, then take one of the sides and we're gonna just use the pin to attach them by using more of the filament as glue. Quickly press and hold to get it to be straight. Once cooled, they are connected. And we can add the next one, connecting them up the side as well then add the next one and the last and you're done happy crafting not too bad we made a milk crate it feels pretty sturdy and you can always run over the lines a second time just to make sure it's not gonna you know break on you we can fill it with our miniature books giving us a little storage. Something like this would look great in a college dorm room. Oh, our Insta Darby book. I remember you. Not too bad. However, it did take almost a whole pack of filament. Out of 24 pieces, I have four left. I made another one in green. This one is a little thinner. I had eight pieces of filament left over which means this one was 20 strands of filament and this one was 16. So I used less, but it is a little less sturdy. Now let's attempt the cake. We have to make two of these, two of these, four of these, and one long strip. So I'm gonna start with, uh, with this one and just go back and forth because we have to cover this whole area. We're trying to be neat. Now I just had green a second ago and I switched to white and I still see some green. So make sure you take the time to try to empty out your pen. Yep, I definitely see green. One down, one to go. I think all of the green is just about out. Two of these. For this one, I'm just gonna color it all in white. But first, I do the white spaces. Then I do the other one in a different direction. Repeat to make four. Then we do the long one at the bottom. I'm gonna outline it first and try to keep it kind of thin because we're gonna need to bend this one then lightly fill in the inside to keep it flexible. Let's go ahead and glue the slice together. So we need the two wedges and then two of the rectangles. Glue the rectangles onto the straight sides of the wedges. Okay, that is kind of looking cake-ish. Now we just need a piece for the back. So let's glue on a small piece of that strip we made earlier, then trim off the excess. And we have our slice of cake that needs a little more detail. So I change my filament to pink while we're waiting for the pink color to, you know, go through the nozzle. I'll just use the excess white on the back, filling in the spaces. Then let's add the pink to the squiggly lines because that is supposed to look like our sponge. Okay, we're kind of getting there, but I think this is way too large. So I remade the pattern a lot smaller and let's try again. Ah, still got some pink in there. I am finding it a little more difficult to be precise in this smaller scale. 
but we're gonna keep trying. Assemble just as before. I put the pink one on the bottom because if this was a cake and the pink is our sponge, then you would see it on the bottom. Add a small piece of that long strip to the back and then trim off the excess. I'm switching to pink, but we're just gonna fill in the top and the back while we're waiting for the extra white to move through. Then let's add our pink sponge. And we want there to be some nice texture on that, so. So before it sets, I use a pen to add a few air holes. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. All we have to do is, you know, add a little bit more icing and I think it'll be a piece of cake. <laughs> Get it? Let's go ahead and add the pink to the other two rectangles, then glue them onto the bottom of the cake, making sure to stay consistent with that texture. Go ahead and switch to white, allowing the pink to run out by reinforcing the inside of the cake. Then add the top using the pen to get into those hard to reach areas. Then glue in the back, curling it around the edge. Trim off the excess, fill in the icing, and we're just gonna make it all squiggly so it has a little texture. And once again, we can use a pen to just smooth out that filament. Well, we're not really smoothing it out, but we are moving it to where we want and trying to give it a texture that looks a little bit like icing. So we can only do small sections at a time so we can get to it before it dries. And we're done. We have our little pink cake with white frosting. I think it came out pretty good. Loving all the texture. The slice doesn't really fit back in. It's a little too chunky, but we'll just leave it on the side like that and pretend like the dolls have a slice of cake. And it's pretty solid. I didn't really do a lot with the bottom of the cake, but you know, we're gonna have that on a plate anyway. I made that one all fancy on the bottom, so yay. Up next, we have the bird cage. Move the mat over and tape it down. We have to make one little perch. Then we have to do this part nine times or more, depending on if you want the cage to be fuller or not. We have a little bird shape. I don't know how well that is gonna turn out. Some extra pieces for the top, two support rings, a base, and a long strip for the bottom. I'm gonna use black for the cage. We have white filament in our pen right now, so let's go ahead and just use it on the bird. Yeah, this, this might be interesting. It's kind of a little 2D bird, but maybe we can just build on it and then use our tools to try and shape it. Yo, I am totally not a bird sculptor. Remove it from the mat, and then let's add to the other side so our little bird is 3D. As the color starts to change, let's use that to add some details, like a beak and some little feet. It kind of looks like a bird. Putting those tiny eyes on was incredibly difficult. They are totally not even, but if you look at him from just one side, he's okay. Now that we have our bird and our black filament, we can get started on the cage. So I'm gonna start on this little perch first and try to be super neat, because that seems to be key, and just go around the line with a pretty thick, amount of filament. Ah, oh, we're getting wonky. And I added a little circle or half circle at the top, just like we did for the little bird head. While waiting for that to dry, let's go ahead and do this very large circle, which is the bottom of our cage. That took a nice amount of filament, and we probably need to spend a little bit more time reinforcing that later, if we have enough. 
our little perch is dry. So let's round out the circle on the other side. Then begin tracing over these curved shapes. And I really want to be neat because this is where these are the bars of the cage. Repeat nine times. Take the thickest pair. We're going to use this for the main support. And this is going to go between them. But first we need this piece. It's a C shape. I'm being very messy here. There we go. Ah. But that's okay because I can quickly move things before they dry and then fill it in. While waiting for that to dry, we need two of these circles. If you go really slow, more of the filament comes out so it gives you a thicker line. And I left a small opening on one side to make it a little easier to get around the cage. Now we have most of the pieces so we can start to assemble. I'm gonna take the circle, place it back over the pattern. There is a dash line going around the edge. I take one of the little bars and glue it right between the dashes. Using the filament as our glue. So you put a little down and then you just press it into it and hold it. Add another one on the opposite side. Add two more. So there are four points going around the edge. Take the C shape and glue it to the top. And now we are starting to see that bird cage shape. Continue gluing on the bars, then find the little opening at the top. Take the circles and glue them going around, allowing them to stay open in the same line as that opening. So we end up with an opening in the back. Trace the small circle at the top and the long rectangle at the bottom. Add the strip around the bottom, then fill it in. Take the swing and let's just add to the bottom and make it a little wider. Then make a small C shape, glue it to the bird so it can be attached to the swing, be removable, and our dolls can hold it. Place the bird on the swing, and then we should be able to just put it into the cage through that little opening that we left to put the bird in a cage on a swing. And we can glue that last little ring on top if we want a handle. It's kind of a rough little bird cage, but we did it. And it can make a fun prop in the background of a diorama. But that cage has me thinking, can we use the three doodler start to make a wrought iron headboard for the dollhouse? So I looked around online for a headboard. I made it a different color and printed it out, tape it down, my mat isn't quite long enough or wide enough to cover it, so we're just gonna draw directly onto the paper. I already have black filament in here, so let's just get started. I'm gonna go this direction, because I'm trying to be mindful of where my ink comes out so I don't hit it with the nozzle and end up smearing it all over the place. So I am just moving around the page to do what I think would be easiest and neatest. The paper wants to curl, so make sure it's taped down really well. And the plastic kind of wants to lift off and curl as well. So you're going to have to use your hand to hold things in place. And I'm pretty certain we're going to have to go over some of this stuff more than once. Ugh. I just messed that up. Okay, let's try this way. Yeah, we're gonna have to go over these more than once because they're just gonna be a little too thin if we don't. And then our headboard is gonna be all floppy and we don't want that. I don't think this is going to be a fast project, but I don't think it's gonna be a terribly difficult one either. You just have to take your time and go slow and know that you're just gonna be here for a while. Ah, all these little strings. I 
I have one side complete. This did take a little while. I probably need to go over it one more time just to make sure it's sturdy. And it's okay to omit things. I left these little lines out because they were just too close. And the nozzle is just too wide for that kind of precision. For me, at my skill level, it wasn't like going to happen. Now we are starting on the other side. This is a lot easier to do when I'm not in front of the camera. That line did come out a little wonky, so I'm just gonna use my tool, which is the needle, and we can just push it into place. Clean up those lines a little bit before everything dries. Ah, I have to recharge it. While waiting, we might as well clean out some old paints by making a painting. It was splatter art, and now it's all over my nails. Ah. Didn't think that through. I made a short, so you can go check that out on our channel. The headboard is finished and it's dried. So let's go ahead and peel it from the paper. It does come off pretty easily. So that is good to know. If you don't have a mat, that's okay. You can just use paper. Oh, it's sticking in a few places, but we can clean those up later. Almost there. Almost done. Ah, oh, there we go. There's our headboard. It's kind of floppy, but you know what? We'll just keep it against a wall and it'll work. This is totally my favorite project from today. I wasn't overly pleased with how the birdcage came out. The cake, however, was pretty good. And I like the crates. So pretty much just the birdcage wasn't my favorite. But this headboard? Yeah, let's make a bed. I cut and glued together cardboard to make a box. Add fluff, batting, fleece, or felt to the top. Cover it with fabric, gluing it around the edge. I added a folded over piece of fabric to the bottom so it gives the illusion of a mattress. We can attach the headboard to the back of the bed or we can just glue it to the wall and then lay the bed next to it. I think that's what I'm gonna do to make it a little easier to store. But I'm not going to glue it. I'm just gonna lay it against the wall and then put the bed in front and that should keep everything in place. Add some bedding and a few pillows will help keep the headboard from falling over. You can also reinforce the headboard with like black painted toothpicks or bamboo skewers. Definitely a fun look for the dollhouse. I've decided to go ahead and paint some thin long toothpicks and attach them to the back. I put them here and here, and that'll just stop it from slowly bending over over time. I'm still not overly excited about my bird cage, but I like my little bird. So I got a little tree shape, and I'm just going to trace over it to make us a fancy little perch. This is also a great idea for Halloween. I made a little circle to use as a base. And I added two little C-shaped feet underneath for balance. And now our bird can sit on the perch. Everything is kind of monochromatic. I wonder if we can make a brighter colored bird. Using the same pattern, I made a red and blue bird. And then we're gonna add a little bit of white around the eyes or where the eyes should be. I'm gonna try to smooth that out or fan it out to kind of look like feathers. I added a little beak and I am now out of black filament. So we'll add a touch of black paint for the eyes. Then let's add a tiny touch of green and quickly add some texture with our tool to give us some kind of parrot-like bird. Yeah, it's a little rough, but we're just gonna put it in the background and let it add to the detail. 
And if you just focus on the doll, it totally works. Thank you for joining us while we doodled some miniatures for the dollhouse. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff and the Frog Vlog. And we will see you next time.